I don't think Elizabeth Warren is Hillary Clinton, but why do you think she's talking out of two sides out of her mouth? Maybe it has to do with going around the country, the New York Times reported of this, basically greasing the wheels of superdelegates, trying to get them to endorse her, and if it went to a second ballot at the convention, getting them to put her over the top as the nominee. Maybe it has something to do, she's trying to get an endorsement, wait for it, from Hillary Clinton. Yeah. The, the person who said, Medicare for all will never ever come to pass. Bottom line, Elizabeth Warren is doing this because Elizabeth Warren's strategy to become the president or become the nominee is twofold. Pretend that I'm just as progressive as Bernie, when she's not, mm-hmm. she's just not. And wink, wink, nod to the donors. That's why this article that I saw today that everybody's going crazy about online is laughable to me. Wall Street Democratic donors warn the party, we'll sit out or back Trump if you nominate Elizabeth Warren. Do you notice that this version, this type of story has come out in six or seven different places? Wall Street hates Warren, this and that. This is called in the business, this is called in the business, in the media business, PR dumps. Mm. This is Elizabeth Warren's campaign feeding feeding to the media that Wall Street hates her. Yeah. that she's just as much of a threat to Wall Street as Bernie Sanders. So she has the best of, world, best, best of both worlds. She could go around the country and have hot toddies with the Democratic Party establishment's leaders. She could do phone calls and text messages with Hillary Clinton. And she could get press that Wall Street is so scared of her. So she gets to be attractive to all they, everybody in America, the, the actual progressives, she gets to be attractive to the establishment. She gets to be attractive to Hillary Clinton and Hillbots. She gets to be attractive to older Democrats that are like looking at Biden like, I don't know if he's well. Let me go over to Warren. And she's attractive to everyone who's jumping off the Kamala Harris ship. So she's basically what, what this is called is being. What do they what, what is with uh, when you play with Plato, 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 um, Mushy. Mushy. She's like squishing it together. She's flexible. She's flexible. Yeah. Flexible. Yeah. yeah. And it reminds me of somebody, and I might, I might pop your existing um, worldview. Yeah. Reminds me a lot about Barack Obama in 2007 and 2008. Yes. And it would see, and this may not be popular, what I'm about to say with the oh. audience. So I'm going to say it because I can't, I don't know how else to be blunt. But let's play devil because the devil's advocate for a second. It does sound like Obama, but what happened there? He won, and he was president for two terms. So, and and what I what yeah, I want to say is that's that it, great. We got a Republican health care plan. I know, and it, and it's horrible. And for the people, for the masses of people, it's horrible. But we're talking about why we're talking about Elizabeth Warren doing this. She's doing it because she's saying this is the best formula to win, and she's doing it because she sees that. There is vulnerability with Joe Biden. There's vulnerability with Kamala Harris. Bernie Sanders, as great as he is, as, as, as many great ideas as she has, she's like, well, I've stood by him before. So at the end of what? the day, she stood by him. No, she, she stood, did not. She stood by him more than any other person. However, Were you sleeping that, in 2016? No, I was not in 2016. I'm talking about recently. I'm talking about in recent history. She has stood by him not total she's flip-flops one minute she says i'm i i everything bernie says is fantastic the next minute she says not really let me tell you something okay so you know american history battle of bunker hill yes okay the battle (laughs) of bunker hill yes revolutionary war yes the 2016 primary and i i used to battle with my old colleague at tyt emma on this we debated warren Mm mm-hmm Bernie Sanders versus Hillary Clinton was the Battle of Bunker Hill yes, for was. the progressive movement. Absolutely. Okay? I agree. This was the closest sniff we had to the White House, maybe since McGovern. And Elizabeth Warren decided to sit that one out. She yes. didn't endorse Bernie Sanders. She didn't endorse so Bernie Sanders. I don't want to hear a damn thing but, that well, she's and always that, And stood. that was the point where she should have stuck by him the most and she didn't. But there's so many times where she's like, the, uh, in the, I think it was the first or second debate. She walks out. She gives him an embrace. She gives him a hug. And, and she did that to nobody else. Like everybody else just shook a hand. And that's the point of Elizabeth Warren. That's the point of this entire discussion about her. In my view, is her psychology. She's going to do whatever it takes to win because she's a little bit cutthroat. And I see that, and that's exactly what Hillary that's, Clinton was. And that doesn't mean she's going to win, but it's maybe that's her mentality. Why what you're saying is fine. Yes, poli- if you actually care about somebody's integrity, I got a problem with that because I, I then, if you first of all, if she becomes a nominee, I think there's, even though Trump 
and I haven't even gotten to Trump. <laughs> yeah, no. Even though Trump is not looking so hot right now, hey, that public option is gonna have a mix of public and private. And before you know it, you have Obamacare 2.0 and 3.0. You know, the planet is burning. Is she, you know, her plan doesn't go anywhere near Bernie Sanders' plan. No. I mean, she talks about breaking up Amazon, breaking up uh, Google, breaking up all these companies, which I think is great. I actually wanted Bernie to go that step. Well, you think you you think she's gonna do that if when she's saying she's gonna take all the all in the I don't know if you know this she said in the primary bad I'm not taking big money I'm not doing big money fundraisers in the general check yeah. check yeah. you think she's gonna break up Google and Silicon Valley no. while taking their checks in the general no. election Absolutely no 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 Absolutely so not. I don't trust her now where I get in trouble with the audience there are some on the progressive area who say hell no. I'm not voting if it's her, blah, 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 blah. Listen, you do what you want. I don't tell my audience how to vote. And if she were the nominee, even if I vote for her, I'm not going to just like close my eyes. I'm going to cover her critically because that's my job. I'm not going to just like not cover her critically like my old stomping grounds just decided Hillary Clinton's fine. I'm going to go. We're going to push go against Donald Trump. No, even if I personally vote for her, I will cover it the way I cover it now. With that said, I don't like I don't think we really have a choice between Bernie or Bust. There might not be another there might not be a planet in four years if Donald Trump gets another four years. hundred percent. Like I, I personally think to to for me the top two issues are healthcare and climate. It's always been the top two issues for me. When I look at water contamination, the pipeline fights, uh mining, you you name it, drought, um hur- extreme weather, hurricanes, this and that. I would rather battle as a progressive Elizabeth Warren as president than have to worry if Donald Trump is reelected, is what the United Nations said even wrong? Could, could, could the irreversible damage be six years from now, seven years from now? Because they said 12, but that was before this Brazil guy started yeah. burning the Amazon. Yeah, I think it's been moved up to eight years. So I personally, yeah. I personally don't think we have the option to, you know, because by the way, if Donald Trump gets another four years and the, the the environmental damage that happens is so bad that it's irreversible, there is no progressive movement. There's no anything. Yeah. So we'll get to that later. I personally don't think she's going to win the nomination. As I said earlier in the live stream, I personally, if she's going to get a huge momentum burst to the point where she's the front runner, I'd rather ha- it happen now than right before Iowa. Because if it happens now, there's only one way to go, one one place to go. That's back down. And if she's the front runner, she's actually going to be challenged. So that's what I would prefer. But I think Bernie, I'm amending what I said because I said he shouldn't attack her. I don't want to see him attack her, but I do think in the next debate, he needs to clearly point out that there are some significant differences here. Distinguish himself. Number one, he needs to point out, you cannot change a system if you take that system's money. My colleague over here said, I'm not going to take the money during the primary. I will take their money during the general. You know, corruption d- doesn't have a, cal- a calendar on an off switch. You're, you're either taking their money or you're not. And I personally, I personally would rather see Bernie Sanders as the nominee and lose doing it the right way than him start taking all of his money and going against who he's always been and win. Because if you start making those little trade offs as a nominee, well, you know, I got to win, so I'm going to take that money from Goldman, I'm going to take that money from Pfizer. This is like the mafia. You don't get to take their money and then do something for them. You don't get to like spurn them and turn your backs on them later. If you do, you're out. Ask ask John F. Kennedy. There is one thing I wanted to say. I'm seeing in the chat that a lot of people are saying that they wouldn't vote for Warren under any circumstances. Well, to be clear, yeah, I make I have a policy. Yeah, I say to my audience, do what you want. I'm exactly. Not, I'm not telling you always what to do. do what you want. I just a little bit of history, and this is one thing that I think I think that, um, and this is a funny part of 2016. But 2016 was not funny to me. The only part was that we genuinely had that episode of South Park where it was the choice between a douche and a turd. That's literally what it was. And unfortunately, Trump was the worst. Hillary was slightly behind her, but she was the better option in that situation. Because look at what we had. Um, I just caution people that it has to be anybody but Trump. And that's that me personally, I just want anybody but Trump at this point. It sounds a little desperate, I know. But as you said earlier, if we elect Trump where he's not worried about being reelected, I'm really worried about what he's going to do, what he's going to say. Like this man is, is so corrupt well, and so bad. 
and and for on climate change and on national security on just just so many things it really worries <laughs> somebody me. somebody said fire this fucking guy i know i, I know told, i told you, you're gonna i know and i am and I, but my point is is that whoever wins the nomination i just want to see everybody get behind that person hopefully it's the right person i believe so, bernie sanders is the right person but hopefully if it is that if it is whoever it is I don't want to see Trump. I don't. So I'm not going. Yeah. I'm not going that far. I there, get it. There's certain I get people it. I'm not voting for. Fair but enough. Fair but enough. what I'm what I'm saying is this. I think that what what people in the media don't understand, mm-hmm. polls could show what they show, right? Trump, Hillary in the polls was going to crush Trump on election day. Yeah. Polls showed Donald Trump was not even going to be a competitor for the Republican nomination. So the polls right now are showing certain. I'm not a polling truther. For the for the most part, the polls are somewhat accurate. There's some polls that are, are a joke. Right now, there's a New Hampshire poll that has Elizabeth Warren in first, Biden in second, and Bernie at a distant third. They don't mention on CNN that 70% of those that they polled were over the age of 50. Yep. No shit, Bernie Sanders <laughs> is, in, is in a distant third. Yeah. But that's how a narrative gets formed, that yeah. Bernie is so, he's lost the mojo and he's done and this, that, and the other thing, when they're only polling people at senior citizen homes. No offense to, to older people. So the bottom line is why I think Bernie needs to draw a distinction. I don't want him to see, I don't want to see him uh, dropping elbows on her. I don't want to see him yelling. None of that because it will backfire. Yeah. I mean, the bottom line is you have to be careful as an older white dude how you come across talking to a, a female candidate. 100%, 100%. And, you, and you should. Yeah. But he needs to point out uh, with, a, with all due respect to my friend here who has a lot of plans, I don't know what your plan is on Medicare because you've said many different things. You say we have options. You say there's a framework. You say this. And as Bernie Sanders, after Elizabeth Warren's latest, where she said, there's a framework, there's a, we have a framework to Medicare for all. Well, this is what Bernie Sanders' senior advisor said to that. Medicare for all isn't a framework. It's a 100-page bill. There have been two white papers released on how to finance it and a 200-page study from University of Massachusetts showing our financing options more than cover the expense while costing middle-class families 14% less than the current system. And that, and honestly, that's what I want to see more of. I want to see well, more. Don't blame, of like, no, 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 no. don't blame Bernie Sanders. No, campaign. it's not. No. Blame the media. Yes, the media and, exactly, because the media doesn't cover it, and that's why we need a coup. There we go. A yeah, coup. Exactly. But <laughs> what I'm saying, I don't care. If you don't want to vote for Warren, don't vote for Warren. Do what you want. I'm just telling Always you. Always do what you want. I'm just but, telling you my viewpoint, yeah. and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover her critically no matter what, even if she is the nominee. But the point is, just like I'll cover Trump critically, I'm going to be equal opportunity. But the point is... Bernie needs to draw these distinctions because right now the media psychops, and it is a psychops against Bernie Sanders. There is a coordinated professional campaign to get this guy out of the race and just totally suck him dry out of support. Why it's so important, the media has been successful in making it seem that Warren is the same as Bernie. And if you're getting the policies you like from Bernie, why don't you go from this nicer, softer version, this yeah. happier, war- happy warrior version of Bernie Sanders he needs to point out she is going to take money in the general. She is essentially going around having hot toadies with the Democratic establishment. She, somebody needs to ask her, are you willing to compromise on Medicare for all as president? Because the way you're talking at these rallies, it's kind of like, oh, we have a runway and an option and a framework. And no, 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 no. And he also needs to point out how are you going to get all these plans done? These all these domestic plans cost some money when you just you voted a year ago for a 715 military 715 billion dollar defense budget. We have a defense budget in this country that is greater than the domestic spending budget. How do you get all these domestic plans if you're down with the military industrial complex? One plus one cannot equal 20. Right. So and I also think he needs to point out. I mean, I, I didn't even see this. This is from her book. Her 2004 book even boasted that, quote, we haven't suggested a complete overhaul of the tax structure, and we haven't demanded that businesses seize and desist from ever closing another plant or firing another worker, nor have we suggested that the U.S. should build a quasi-socialist safety net to the rival the European model. This was in her book not so long ago. Remember, she voted for Ronald Reagan twice as an adult. Here, She's essentially 
talking negatively about the quasi-socialist safety net at our Europe of the European model. This is somebody who believes in Medicare for all. I get that you think people evolve. People evolve when they want to get elected. Yeah, of course. And that's what she's doing. She's saying what she can to get elected. And I don't, I don't like that at all. That's, and But this is my point. What politician isn't doing that? I think that one of the things that definitely happens a lot with politicians, and they say everything and say everything, they get what they want. It's a horrible practice. Um, I actually I, I kind of love it. It kind of feels like a reality show sometimes. It's very entertaining, only this is a little bit better. But that's really bad. Um, what I will say is that the, sort of the last thing that I'll, I will like just kind of put out there is that, you know, I always would I always wanted a politician to be as honest as possible. And unfortunately, and this is the thing that I, I would like I'm going to be more educated on is, is that physically, emotionally and mentally possible? Yeah, it would be nice. His name's Bernie Sanders, and his name's Bernie Sanders. However, the one thing I have, and this is going to blow, this is to blow your mind. Bernie Sanders has been in politics a long time. Oh, stop it! And has, and and I'm not saying he is in, in nearly as bad as anybody else. I don't think he is. I actually think he is the best of us. I do believe that. He reminds me of like a, a uncle of mine that you want to go and just have a beer with, and just like that's what. <laughs> I mean, I've already established she's obviously moonwalking away from the things she's claiming she's for. I hope she's challenged during the debates because, honestly, Elizabeth Warren hasn't had a glove laid on her yet by anyone. The moderators have been basically, like, drooling all over her. CNN and MSNBC basically are, are public relations for her. Washington Post is drooling over her. It's pathetic. But I think she's a weak candidate against Donald Trump. You want to know why? Donald Trump is only bailed out electorally if there's somebody else with integrity questions. Yep. That's the only way. Like, I'm not a Hillary Clinton fan, but pretty much anyone on earth could have beat Donald Trump but Hillary Clinton. Because yes. she had all of these corruption and trustworthiness issues. You're going to put somebody who ad after ad. Donald Trump has already $150 million in the bank. You're going to put somebody who you're just going to see these ads Native American, Pocahontas, Native American, Pocahontas, Native American, Pocahontas. There might be more things that come out on uh, places she put down she was the Native American. Can you what, imagine what, what that debate's going to be like? Right. Oh what, what Donald Trump is so good at doing is muddying the waters. He's good at saying, oh, yeah, I'm a little corrupt, but, like, you're going to hire Pocahontas here? You know? You, you can't give somebody. Ugh. You can't. And by the way, not only did she do this when she was younger, then she did a DNA test, which insulted plenty more. It, nobody has gone after her in the Democratic primary over it, which I think is a mistake. I frankly think I would like Tulsi Gabbard, frankly, <laughs> to bring it up in the debate. But somebody, I mean, this is a real liability uh, in the general election. The second thing, frankly, you got to pull, you got to pull back that those ten, th that ten percent of Obama voters that ended up voting for um, Trump. You got to pull back at least three to five percent of them. Yeah. I don't know if Elizabeth Warren's the person to do that. I think Bernie Sanders is the person to do that, but I don't know if Warren is because a lot of those Rust Belt people aren't attracted to like an academic. Yeah. Who you know they're not they're they're more gut instinct people, not like I have a plan for this. Like that's what the blue collar worker wants. They want somebody that they gut instinct connect with. That's why Elizabeth Warren is doing way better among highly educated people making more than $50,000 a year. Those are not the working class. So I think she's the wrong candidate. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as 5 to $10 a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Status Quo.